What up fam, friends, and fellow Slayer Elite? Slayers are here with a new and improved guide on Cerberus. Just hit 10,000 a couple days ago, February 15th, 2016, around 5 p.m. First, I would just like to thank you all for the support I've received in-game for this goal slash achievement on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. You guys are awesome. I genuinely love you all. I really do. So here we go. In this video, I will be initially touching up my previous method of Cerberus as per request with a few things I discovered as well as a few things people have commonly asked me about including the release of the bludgeon, dragon warhammer, and the guffins method so let's just dip right in. After the release of the skill perks best in slot across the board are debatable but purely up to preference again for what I use across the board from best to worst HBK prayer cape Arty Cloak using Stab on Hosta, of course, with Petresmus. And then you can go into doing the crafting, construction cape, utilizing those for quicker banks, as well as the Desert Amulet for to boot. And then lastly, the fire cape. As far as into the setup for the duration, you can use the Key Masters. I take two super combats, one sip from the bank, and then just use the key master to get there, that's one way. Another way is you can use this both drink of stamina, antidote, and a summer pie depending on your agility level. You may already have it. And then for the food, I use seven to nine Sarah brews depending on your experience, on how well you slay Serb, you may need more, you may need less. The spec weapon, one SGS, great overall wep, heals, prey, and health. Sometimes I get a little frustrated. It doesn't hit the way I want it to, and I question why it's at 50 mil, but that's another story. Again, guys, longevity here is a key in my guides. You won't get this kill count using the sharks. It just it takes too long, at least not for a couple years. Also, one spectral spirit shield i realize not everyone is going to be able to afford it right off the bat so if you don't have it just calculate and substitute more prayer and super restores to suffice a good method i used before i had the shield was before the souls launch to make sure you have at least 64 prayer so by the time they do come out you won't take the 90 prayer loss the rest of the inventory is super stores, as you can see, overall price, reference across the board is typically 220k. I realize variables change and GE is unpredictable, so a lot of times, a couple months down the road, this might not be the case, but generally, it seems like, at least from when I created this way back when I was at kill count one, super stores have just typically been going up. It's quite funny. Another neat reason I really enforce and encourage using brews, not just at Sir, but at other bosses as well. If you want to incorporate longevity as a whole, Sarah brews have a unique feature of not using delay ticks, such as sharks. Because when you eat, you have a little waiting period. So again, more time focused on killing it is also always a benefit. Going into the gear choice, pretty standard stuff here. Three unique things that I've changed about it and really noticed a big change using is the Varax skirt for the prayer bonus. Great overall defense and is untradeable, so it's kept on death. So for a lot of you newbies out there, just doing the boss, when you die a lot, obviously it's nice to not always have to pick up stuff. Many people have debated that Bandos Pass at least is the better choice. While as well that as that may be true for you, I have different opinions about it purely preference. I dislike them just because they don't offer a really great outstanding melee bonus and it has weaker slash defense than even the dragon skirt. The only thing it's really known for is just that slight slight strength bonus and the somewhat decent range defense but the boots make up for it. The boot choice that I'm going to explain here in a little bit. For the stylish footwear we got the Bandos boots for the win. This is where I lose a lot of people. They scratch their head. I wikied the stats and I'll show them on screen here. When I first started killing Serb, 
and notice that these groups don't get enough credit for what they actually offer. They give plus one for not a huge thing, but what's nice about it is that they're one of the few groups in the game that offer an outstanding range bonus as well as just defense for melee across the board. Primos don't u utilize this. Dragon Boost don't utilize this. I'm, I kind of question what was going on when they invented those. It would have been nice if they would have incorporated that. So especially for like when you're tanking God Wars, a lot of people bring Bandos because it's just overall a great group to use. As far as the third and final item, this is where it really changes the game. I see too many people using the Dragon Defender, while although it may be a nice choice for a little bit of accuracy, I've tested it numerous times as well as with the Bludgeon, Dragon Warhammer, and wound up getting a significant less kills per trip, and it was also slower in some areas. Another shield that I would also encourage along with the DFS that you could swap out if you can't afford the DFS would be the crystal shield offers really great range defense bonuses again we're looking at longevity and consistency here the DFS when it's fully charged with 50 offer has a nice strength bonus but it also offers really good across the board melee and outstanding range defense okay so the mechanics of the boss at the beginning of the test video you'll often see that I will be on top of Serb and what I do is I get all my prayers ready to go swing at it twice back up roughly around four to five spots it doesn't really matter what direction but then I, you either can wait for the auto retaliate to get back, kick back in, or you could just hit it. And this is a nice feature to make it so it is unable to attack you with a melee hit. Because at the beginning, when you're fighting Serb, it will do a triple hit. And it also does triple hits along the way with the kills, but I don't bother with that. I just know that right at the beginning, he does that. So that's just, you know, extra damage you can avoid if you just do that feature. Remember now that when you are using the Zamahasta, you're going to want to have Crush, as with Mod Ash when he tweeted around two to three months ago that Crush was the weakness. That's all I've been using. It's not a huge difference. I believe from the stats, Serb has like plus 10 Crush, and for Stab, it's not really much of a difference, plus 20, but the Slash is a pretty significant difference. So you definitely don't want to use that style or a whip for that matter. If you can try to use a hosta, use that. And then if you can't, I guess your next choice is the bludgeon. Okay, so I did some testing with the crush slash stab across the board for three tests each of, the, of each attack style. And what I came out statistically with that is that over time with the equipment that I am wearing crush comes out on top with 9.19 DPS that's damage per second stab is a close second quite honestly doesn't make much of a difference with 9.08 DPS damage per second the slash is the big change with only 7.76 damage per second Going into the ring slot, preferably, I would highly recommend Ring of the Gods. However, I couldn't get one, so I couldn't test it really that much. But I know it would be my number one choice if I was able to do that. As its effects, if you are unaware, it acts like the Holy Wrench. So you could get the benefits of the plus four HP if you had the HP Cape and the Regen Brace, or the plus two HP with HP Cape and the barrels gloves to boot this just allows you if you're unfamiliar with the holy wrench does it gives you i think anywhere from one to four additional prayer per sip and that can add up over time it's a really nice feature and lastly of course you got the cosmos i already quote the hosta option on stab Alrighty, going into another cool technique that i discovered with the lava 
mechanics. Going to be getting into mechanics now. You'll notice for the first half of the test video, I do a method where you fall back after he howls Aru. His special soul attack went below 200 as well, making it so he will most likely do a special of the souls and the lava ability. Running back at the precise time slash tick will allow you to 100% miss the lava as Serb will spit them generally in the last known location where you were standing. And if you notice in the video that I will be walking back, he will spit it. I'll come forward and the lava will be behind me. It's a general avoidance technique. It's really cool. You can predict it and you remove a couple steps. So another one that you can go into, it's a, it's just another option. It doesn't always work because it's 95% effective. You can still take damage. I say this because with the lava special comes an understanding on how the mechanics operate. So let me go into depth real quick on how it works. So Serb, he spits out three of these at random below 200 HP usually. Each one of these three lava splits has a nine square tile radius. This means if you move only one space away, you will still be taking damage. I can't tell you how many times I've rolled on the floor bawling in laughter because I, on release I would see these guys, there'd be like six of us, and a couple of them would just be standing there and they'd be taking 6, 10, 6, 10, 6, 10, and eventually they would just die and then they'd go, what the hell? What, what happened here? And it, it was just so funny. Going back to the explanation of the lava mechanics, there's a slight chance he will spit two adjacent slash close to each other, making it sometimes the movement slash tick wise to remain unscarred or undamaged from the lava. So just when going into this, it's better to do the first method, but obviously sometimes it's just easier to do the second method as sometimes you could be late with the ticking. Okay, a couple last cool mechanics slash tips to leave forth on. I don't really show them in the video, but I will explain them. There on rare occasions, you will kill Serb and he will last second howl for the soul special if you manage to kill it and this happens you do have two choices i would recommend doing the first choice if you're fast enough and you have really good hands you could right click and do the quick pass option on the flames making it so you will not take any of the damage and the soul people will start chanting at you, yelling at you. The second option that you can always do if you kill him and the souls are coming out is you can try to log out. However, this only works 50% of the time, I would say. There's been times where I have died or sometimes just screwed up because I get so frustrated from trying to click log out and it doesn't work. But again, that's just another technique that you can use. So let me just talk a little bit at the end here. I've tested with the bludgeon. It's really nice if you walk the boss, I suppose, to use it. But I'm really lazy, and I just like sitting there hitting it. And this is what I did for a huge portion of my testing and everything. I tested the Dragon Warhammer when it came out. I got really excited. I ended up getting one as a drop a couple days in, and I wound out disappointed. I did manage to hit pretty good through my testing. I hit a 78 at one point, but unfortunately, I was expecting the Dragon Warhammer to be relatively slower than the Ruin Long, because even then, maybe it could have been a possibility as a replacement for the Zamorakian Hosta on Crush. But it literally is as slow as his god sword. And just across DPS, the Hasta 
is just as fast as a whip, so it's going to do more DPS across the board and is just nicer. Going into another method that people use that I've tried but I don't typically like because, again, there's a lot of negatives with it. I mean, honestly, it's open to interpretation, and that is the Guffins method. While it may be really nice to heal all the time to l think like you're going to last there, Guffins is completely based off RNG, so sometimes you could get 8 kills, sometimes you could get 20 kills. It really is random as hell. So I don't like how that is. I like with my setup that when you'll see, I think in this video I almost get 19. It was just a random test video. And typically on a bad day, the least kills I will get is round 14. And the highest throughout the 10,000 that I've killed, the highest I've ever gotten was actually 20. It was one time. It was crazy. It was right around 9,000 I ended up getting it. But of course, that was just with a lot of drops of the Summer Pie, and I think I got a couple times where the Super Restores, and I hit really well with my SGS, and all that good jazz, so yeah. Another thing that just really sucks about Guffins is it's really slow. When you're attacking with the Hosta, you're about as fast as a whip. So when you're doing the Guffins method, although you may sometimes have really strong RNG and last longer. Typically your trips are also going to be longer in time resulting in less kill count per hour. But yeah, as you guys can see throughout the 10,000 that I killed the total amount of statistics I got 29 Primos, 24 Pegasians, 15 Eternals, 19 Smoldering, and 10 Jars. Realize that the luck on the Primals exists pretty heavily. This is not the case for everybody, but let me just say, I was probably one of the last people on release to actually receive an Eternal. I didn't think I got one until like right around 2500 KC. So there's that. You also notice that one of the features that I utilize for the majority of my Serb trips is the benefit of stacking the regen brace and the HP cape, allowing you to every 60 seconds, because you'll see on my test video here, I have it up for you to notice, every minute it heals exactly four and for an average run when you're staying here as long as I am it's typically anywhere from 23 to 26 minutes a trip times that by four and you're looking at at least a hundred health gain that's five sharks that's pretty much like two and a half or one and a half brews so that's really nice and it does it does make it so you can bring less brews and utilize more having super restores so you could in term last longer get more kills again consistency and longevity here all right so we're at that point in the video where i start going into a little bit in detail and in depth about the statistics of the 10,000 serb that i've killed i find it very interesting myself i like telling about that information. This isn't the only information that I record. I record a lot of other things. But for this video's sake, I will release those numbers to you. So let's just say at the beginning, this is what I've generally started using this setup for the majority of it. And so we'll take 10,000, divide that by the average of what we normally kill, which is about 16 a trip. You get this number 625, okay? That's how many trips I've taken to get 10,000. So we got to take that number, 625, and times it by, let's just say, 8 Cerebrews, okay? You're looking at 5,000. Take that 5,000 brews used over the course for 10,000 Cerebrews. 
and multiply it by the average GE price, which is 4.5K or 4,500 GP, equaling to about 22.5 mil spent in just Sarah Brew supplies. Okay, now we move on to the super restores. So we take that number, 625, and times it by our average inventory of 16 super restores. So 10,000 is the number we come up with. So we take that number of the super restores used for supplies, times it by your average of, let's say, 12K. So we're looking at 120 mil in just super stores, it's quite crazy. And then we're gonna go looking into the super combat, saying that we just use one only every trip. So obviously, go back to that number again, 625. Take 625 times it by roughly 20K, it's the cost of the super combat. You're looking at about 12.5 mil in super combats. So all together, you're looking at a whopping 155 mil just in supplies. Now that's not even including the gear. BCP that I purchased was around 12 mil at the time. The Spectral I managed to get way back when the hype died down a little bit for 42. Not putting those variables in obviously because I don't think it's appropriate. But yeah, those are some statistics guys. Well, that about wraps it up, guys, for my guide. Much love from the czar, and be sure to hit that like button. Sub to me if you want to see more content, guides, progress in the future, or if you just generally want to support me. Also, check out my Twitter and Twitch. I might even be live right now. And cheers, guys. Slay on!